Welcome to Healthcare Matters, bringing you the latest insights and innovation shaping the future of healthcare. This episode is powered by Arab Health in partnership with M42. My name's Peter Birch, and today we're decoding the future, specifically looking at the Emrati Genome Program and the power of population genomics. Joining me today is Paul Jones, CEO of Biopharma Solutions at M42. Hey, Paul, how are you going? Doing very well. Thank you for inviting me. It's great to have you here. Yeah, look, I, I'm really keen to learn more about the Emirati Genome Program, but I think before we get to that, I'd love to um, uh, learn a little bit more about population genomics. Because when I think genomics, I think, you know, hyper-personalized individual uh, health information for, for this particular person. But then when we say population genomics, what what does that mean? So... I mean, I've been involved in this space for the last decade. Let me just kind of touch on that. And there was a very large scale program looking at the, the idea that you can drive value from looking at a population, but still deliver at the individual level. So there's this interesting balance between population level engagement and simultaneously linking to the personal profile of an individual and ultimately, in some cases, developing medicines that may suit the, that individual profile. So let, let me define population genomics as being something that encompasses delivering clinical value at the individual level that will be tailored to you know, a personalized medicine theme but the interesting thing is that same data set that's generated from genomic data linked to clinical data is invaluable for research purposes and today we probably only understand about one percent of what's in the genome that we can tailor to suit your own personal profile or groups of people that have a similar profile to you so that 99% needs to be made available to a wider research community. And they can, over time, start to unlock the insight that's in that from a research perspective. And when they can validate that and translate that into something that could be relevant to the clinic, we can facilitate that connection. So I think there's a wonderful link here between a very broad and international, actually a global research agenda and something that is always very localized in terms of how healthcare is delivered within a country to the people that you know, represent that, that population. So when we talk about population genomics, my definition encompasses both the population level research and the individualized tailored treatment that is delivered on a one-to-one on -a -one basis between a physician and, the, and their carer. There's also another element to this though. I think if you, if you can get that dynamic working well, the translation of research into the clinic it can be underpinned by an economic development agenda. It can encourage investment in these programs. You can make strong business cases for why this will drive down costs ultimately in healthcare systems. But there's also an interest from a precision medicine industry perspective. Biotech and pharma are very interested in these data sets to try and understand how they may enhance what they do from a precision medicine perspective in developing molecules that could then be introduced country by country. So I think there's... The, there could be spin-outs, the, the, these are big data sets that generate interesting insights. AI can be woven into the agenda as it is in everything nowadays. And so um, there's, there's a really fascinating economic underpinning to this clinical research interface. I'm, I'm going to ask you about that in a, in a little bit because that's, that's an important point in itself. It's interesting hearing about you know, the, the benefit on the clinical side and uh, for the patient side and, and even on the economic side and the, and the growth aspect. So we'll unpack those and also the, the, um, what we can do with these big data sets as well. But I want to tie it into, so, so this is relevant to the Emirati Genome Project. Is that right? Tell me a little bit more about that. So the Emirati Genome Program itself is an example of a population genomics program. It was initiated four years ago with the goal of sequencing and by sequencing, I mean DNA sequencing, effectively digitizing a blood, a, a sample taken from a patient and, and creating a digital file, a genomic file from that, that sequences the DNA. And then you, you, driving that across the whole of the local population here in the Emirates. So the goal was a million whole genome sequences of all of the local population. And as we stand here today, we've got an excess of 700, 750,000 whole genomes. So three quarters of the population have been sequenced. Um, and the Emirati genome was really set up to, to look at the implications of that for how you might deliver healthcare more effectively for the Emirati population in the future. So back to this personalized healthcare agenda, but also, and we're just starting to explore this now, how might you open it up to this international research engagement opportunity, both from academic perspective, but also from an industry perspective. And I think I just reinforced this point about 
industry and academia can be global. You know, there, there were academics, centers of excellence clearly within the Emirates, but it doesn't have to be limited to that in terms of that ultimate research engagement. Um, but healthcare will always be delivered on a local basis and, and a, on a personalized basis in that sense. So there's this really interesting dynamic between the two. M42 plays a critical role in, the, in partnership with the DOH, who um, are the data custodians here, the owners of the data, on behalf of the citizen, citizens of the Emirates. M42 has played a critical role in the data generation piece um, over the last four years, but actually broader than that, we've been responsible as a company for recruiting the patients, making sure the consent is appropriate, um, collecting the sample, storing that sample, sequencing se sequencing the data and indeed interpreting it where possible um, to deliver that clinical value so that you do start to get programs initiated that can be delivered in, with the, you know, in support of the DOH who are driving this agenda um, into the population of, of the Emirates across the UAE. And so, as you know, you mentioned there's three quarters of the um, population already sequenced and building up this really rich data set that I imagine can will have impact at, a, at an individual level, but also at scale. Um, love to learn about the, I guess, the opportunities for uh, innovation and, and new ideas and, and I guess building like what we can do with this data set to be able to improve the whole healthcare ecosystem. There's a few specific examples. Let me give you some examples of things that have had a a population level impact within the Emirates, but at the same time translate as making a difference for the individual. <clears throat> and so we've looked at things like applications of this data set, innovative applications around things like um, premarital screening. We're looking at things like pharmacogenomics, so looking at how your individualized response to drugs can be um, understood from your genetic profile and and, and can then be accommodated for in terms of maybe you know, increasing or decreasing the dose that would be appropriate for you as an individual. So that's a really clear application of making the taking of medicines more tailored towards the individual, more personalized, and therefore you know, making it feel like something that um, is more appropriate to you as an individual. From our perspective, more broadly at M42, we're, innovation can also be encompassed into the types of technology that we use to do the sequencing. We've worked with a number of partners over the years. We continue to evaluate as part of a technology evaluation center of expertise that we have that looks at how do we optimize the, the, the cost and the efficiency and the quality associated with sequencing. There's a massive data generation exercise here. There's a whole bunch of, of external companies, innovative companies that we can bring to our table, I call them platform partners, um, organizations that can facilitate with that interpretation and making it relevant to the, to the groups of individuals that it might be a, applicable for. Um, there's a whole industry out there innovating around pharma and biotech, you know, looking at new medicines, therapies that could be appropriate depending on um, what condition you may be talking about here, but particular applicability in, ar around these large scale genome programs in terms of things like rare disease, looking at oncology, can cancer treatment. So. You know, genomics has, uh, you could almost treat genomics itself as an innovation that was, if you imagine, say, 15, 20 years ago, the cost of a whole genome was in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. It took a huge global collaboration to, to facilitate the process of sequencing the first human genome. And we're now in, in, a, in a state just in our lab where we can sequence 500,000 whole genomes per annum. We have the capacity to do that takes maybe up to two days to sequence. You know, we, we, we do it in batches, but you know, effectively you can sequence a genome in a, in a day. And so that in itself is an in innovation that w originally was, was focused around the research agenda um, and has translated into having the kind of impacts on a clinical system that we're talking about here. And the, the thing I would emphasize that around the UAE program particularly is that I don't think there is any other country in the world that is as close to sequencing the whole of its population. That makes it really unique. And, um, and, it, and it does have fundamental implications in terms of how you structure your healthcare system. And one of the key themes that we're really interested in unpacking, dri driven by the DOH here, is, is, is emphasizing this shift from healthcare, which most health systems around the world are catering for, Ill illness management effectively, and how you might shift that to health and care. There, there will still be people who need care, but how do you promote health and look at prevention, early detection? Um, and genomics has uh, the potential to start to shift the emphasis towards more preventative, early, certainly early detection 
um, than if you don't use genomics in a health system. And the fact that the Emirates has 80%, 70, 80% of its population sequenced, already we're starting to uncover the value that the might, that might create. So innovation all over the place. Absolutely. You know, and you're so right in terms of the uniqueness of the program, because I'm sitting here thinking, you know, we talk anywhere around the world about the need to shift to more preventative care and uh, uh, to give people more information in their hands to be able to t take ownership of their uh, healthcare. Do you think that, you know, this type of program is so unique to this particular region that it's not something that could be done anywhere else? Or do, are you inspired by what can be done here and hope that there's other parts of the world that can kind of replicate what's been done here? I think other countries will look at it and the implications that this is having on healthcare, health and care, and indeed how it is stimulating research engagement, driving that economic value proposition that I mentioned at the beginning of our discussion. I think other countries will look at this and say, how do we do our version of that? Because for me, this is, this is the future. This is, this is what's required. It's, a, it's an innovation that has relevance and applicability to how you structure your health system. And that's of relevance to every country around the world. Um, I would argue the UAE is ahead of the game, leading the world actually on, on this front. There are examples of other countries. Uh, I, I myself was involved in the UK where there was something called the 100,000 Genome Program. What wonderful initiative a decade ago when I was there at the, in, in the early days involved with the, with the, um, the, the senior exec team, um, just cr setting up the program. Still continues to this day um, and they continue to sequence you know, in higher numbers. But if you look at the proportion of the population that sequence when you do 100,000 genomes on a population of 60 plus million versus here where you have a local population of a million and you nearly sequence three quarters, you can, can imagine the implications that that has. And I mean, if I just flag one thing that, you know, if I was, if, if our head of bioinformatics, good, very good friend of mine, Tiago, I'll, I'll give a call out to Tiago as part of the, part of this discussion. Um, he's emphasizing really, really strongly this idea that when you look at the data, as he does on a daily basis, what you see are family structures in this, just inherently, because you've nearly sequenced the whole of the population, you are going to see the family structures presented. And you're able to track and monitor the, the, the link between grandparents, parents and children, and in some cases where disease is, go, is flowing through generations. And from a, from a discovery perspective, from a research perspective, that is an incredibly rich source of insight. It might accelerate the uh, the uncovering of you know I talk about this one percent of what we understand now and trying to un you know uncover more insight over time. I think that kind of family structure that is evident from what we're starting to understand now may accelerate the ease with which we can, for example, un uncover the real biological mechanisms that are sitting behind some of these diseases. And there's no doubt that that, that will make it. Um, you will be able to bring benefit to the people of the Emirates in that process, but actually it might, might well have global implications. You may well be on di discovering new biological me mechanisms that could have much broader applicability. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? And I think uh, you, you touched on it earlier in terms of not just the, the benefit population health level, clinical level, individual level, but there's a real business case that can be made around some of these initiatives as well. And you touched on some of these already, but um, you know, sometimes it depends on what part of the world you're in. Some may look at, well, you know, should we be focusing on that as a, a putting a particular emphasis, you know, this is healthcare, but I feel like if you can deliver good quality outcomes for patients and build a sustainable and thriving system around it, you, you need to have both to be able to do you that. Absolutely in a, in a do. But I, what I would emphasize, and if I could simplify it into saying often these these programs are government sponsored. They will define value in a certain way. You'll have clinic clinicians involved. There's a clinical perspective on this. Think about the research engagement, the academic research engagement. They will view value in a different way. Industry coming to the table will have their definition of value. And ultimately they're all striving to deliver value for patients, make an impact for patients. What I'm, what I've would emphasize is that if you understand what value means for an academic, let's just keep it simple and say academics are really interested in publishing. That's how they spread their insights, their knowledge. So their, their definition of value may well be how many publications have I generated? If you're a clinician, I'm guessing you're going to be looking at health outcomes, you know, for the patients that you're treating. For an industry participant who, who let's just say a biotech company that's developing a precision medicine for a certain disorder, their definition of value will be different than academic papers or perhaps still have a focus on clinical outcomes, but they will do it through the precision medicines that they're developing. So 
my, I mean, I've, I've been challenged on this over the years. And so how do I make a business case, Paul, for doing these large scale business, um, sequencing programs, these pop gen programs? Why, why should we do it as a government in a country? And my advice is to start to take a macro perspective on this. Take a step back. You need all of those participants at the table, the government sponsorship, the clinical, the academic, the industry focused around the patient. But, but recognize that each of them will define value in a different way. I think they can all get value from engaging and supporting around these large scale programs, but just recognize it's different. And if you can encourage them all to sit around the same table, then I think one plus one plus one plus one will equal more than the four individual participants and ideally drive even more value. And if you can get that to be coordinated, synergized, then that's really what, and, and we're at that point now in the UAE, there's already government sponsorship. There's a wonderful clinical community engaging around this. We're stimulating research engagement. We're bringing in industry to the table. The ultimate goal is focused around patient value. We're getting those stakeholders to work together. We're facilitating that at M42. We're catalyzing the building of an ecosystem around these large scale programs. And I, I think that's just a, that, that will just move. It's already world leading. I think the fact that we've got all those component parts in place and are now working to coordinate and stimulate that will we'll make it even more so and, and will we'll have implications well beyond the borders of the UAE. And the mm. It's exciting to think about. And we always talk about, you know, the need to engage all the different stakeholders to be able to rally behind a new initiative or any kind of change project. And um, yeah, I've, uh, th that sounds obvious to me now about the need to understand the alignment of values and, and where each stakeholder is going to get um, a win. And um, uh, that, that's how you bring everyone across the line to drive some of these through. So then thinking about uh, lastly, in this conversation, what's next? So a lot of work's already done, but it sounds like there's a lot more to do. What's on the horizon for... So we, we've really focused so far on what's called um, sequencing of the DNA. There are other omics in the mix. So we can look at uh, proteomics, um, actually where many drugs are, are, are targeted and actually have, have an effect. Um, we can look at the epigenetic profile. So... Um, and I, I would actually say, you know, there's another omics in the mix. Economics is also part of the agenda here. And, you know, we, we want to underpin this with an e economic value proposition that makes this sustainable in the long term by bringing these different stakeholders together and stimulating that economic growth. So I think we, we're at a stage already where we've demonstrated clinical impact. We will continue to refine and drive that impact. That, that ultimately is the goal. There's no question at all. And, um, we will drive more towards a preventative future. And that I think will be world leading and other countries will learn from that. There is, there's a global engagement around the research community that's being initiated as we speak. Um, we're, we're looking at building an interface into industry. Um, so that's in quite early days, early stages. There's a, there's a long way to go on that, but again, that could be really fruitful. Um, and then I think we need to be so we're, and we're adding omics to the mix. Now that there are other questions that what, what happens beyond the MRT genome program? And so, you know, if you look, look beyond the borders of the UAE, there's expertise that's been built here that other countries are interested in. And we are very, very open to taking some of that experience and helping other countries be successful in driving their version of their pop gen program for their country. So I anticipate that we'll drive more omics. We'll look for more clinical value will drive research engagement, will justify the business case and look for economic sustainability through encouraging investment and spin outs and growth around this agenda. And I think ultimately we will, our, our goal is to facilitate this ultimately to become a global endeavor. And uh, we're really keen on, on making that happen and helping where we can. Mm. Well, look, I mean, it's such an exciting area and like many innovations within the UAE and as we've seen this week uh, I know the world will be watching on with interest as you continue to drive that agenda so Paul I really appreciate you making the time for this conversation today. thank you very much pleasure to be here and thank you for tuning in to the Healthcare Matters podcast make sure you're subscribed on Apple Podcasts Spotify or YouTube so you can catch all the future episodes this episode is powered by Arab Health in partnership with M42 my name's Peter Birch I'll see you next time